to South Atlantic Wrestling. I'm Ted Webb, and we've got a fantastic card for you today. And joining me at ringside, the one, the only, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Steamer, we are, we are in for a tremendous card today. You know something, Ted? Thanks again for the, the introduction. You know, we got uh, Curtis Thompson is going to be on this hour. The man that says that he delivers, and he's been doing nothing but delivering pinfalls one two three every time he's wrestling on television the nasty boys the heavyweight tag team champions are going to be with us today but you know as everybody knows that the american bulldogs are hot on their tail and a very very close friend of mine and also a training partner at my gym war eagle chris chavis is going to be wrestling this uh, hour it's going to be a great hour for all the wrestling fans and uh, i know you hate for me to say this but we've got our segment of stud stable which i'm sure you look forward to weekly well i didn't bring it up but i knew that you would Let's turn it over to our ring announcer and get underway with some action with Fabian Fuentes. This action is one fall, making his way to the ring. opponent weighing 275 pounds from Greensboro here is Dan Grundy well I tell you this is going to be an exciting match and Ricky at a time when the eyes are focused on the Middle East and we all know what the Rangers are doing sacrificing in the Saudi Arabian desert it's uh, certainly good to see a guy that has paid his dues in uniform who's now doing his battling in the wrestling ring instead of out in the, in the jungles of El Salvador or in Grenada or uh, in the Iran rescue mission as uh, Ranger Ross has. He's in there against a big guy, though, in Dan Grundy. You know, everybody can see there's a big size and weight difference, but I'm sure Ranger Ross, with the skills that he's learned while he was in the service and while he was serving for our country, looks right here. And once again, that he will come on top. He's, uh, he's proven himself very well on television the last several weeks. I don't, think he's I don't think he's suffered a lot. Man, I'll tell you what, he just caught Grundy in the uh, chin with a tremendous elbow, and now he's going into work. But you know, you got you to be careful with Dan Grundy. Here's a big, strong, tough guy who will, who will bend the rules, break the rules when necessary to try to gain the advantage. Well, everybody knows, uh, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of the wrestlers know that Big Dan Grundy is trying to make a mark for himself in this uh, profession. That he has been around for a number of years, but he'd like to be out there every single weekend just ro rolling and tumbling with all the wrestlers. So he will take it, uh, an unfair advantage of any wrestler that he meets in the ring, without a doubt. Well, a victory over Ranger Ross today on national television would certainly enhance his ranking. Everybody wants to pull off that big upset victory on TV because they can parlay that into big money. Without a doubt, you know, you have a lot of people that watch television. You have a lot of people that get involved with merchandising, product endorsements, commercial time. And they see somebody that catches their eye and they've, uh, they've got a product in mind. A lot of the professional wrestlers uh, throughout the last three or four years have been taking advantage of this and, and, and doing very well at it. No doubt about it. And Ranger Ross firing away now, trying to turn the tide and get the advantage. Hooks the leg. One, too close to the two, ropes. Too close to the ropes. That's right. Ronnie Hanna, your referee, counting two, but uh, Grundy able to break out of it. Before the match, Ranger Ross was telling me to remind the fans at home to remember the Rangers that are in the Saudi Arabian desert. Still thinking of his buddies, Ricky. You know, all, all day long, you hear it on the radio, you see it on TV, a lot of the people that are here locally and also nationally that are getting involved in supporting our, our fighting forces over there, sending them gifts, sending them supplies, and doing whatever they can to help and show support coming from the United States. No doubt about it. Ranger Ross and Dan Grundy. And we've got a great turnout out here today, folks from the Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club in the Mecklenburg Group Home. I'd like to welcome them all aboard. Big fans of South Atlantic Wrestling. Ranger Ross showing a little bit of his martial arts ability. Those side kicks in the midsection of Grundy are starting to take their toll. It's uh, slowed the big man considerably. You can see that Ranger, I think for the first time during this match, is on top of things. You know, you're a guy that resorts to the martial arts from time to time, and how do you know when you got your guy hurt? How do you know when to go for that pinfall? Well, uh, going for a pin, you don't know exactly uh, how hurt your opponent is. You may know that he is hurt and that he is down. 
you've got to go for a pinfall for the fact that you don't know that you might uh, catch a pinfall at that time. So it's better to go for it than to stand around and, and, and watch the man get back up. Well, I'll tell you what, Grundy right now a bit shaken after taking 10 shots straight to the head and then that survive kick to the midsection. Woo! Grundy! That was, a, that was a back fist right up next to the jaw. One, two, and Grundy barely, and I mean barely, powers out of that one, Rick. Ranger Ross, one of the most popular wrestlers in South Atlantic wrestling. I can tell you right now, when the mail starts coming in, you, War Eagle, the American Bulldogs, and this guy's right up there with you, Ranger Ross. The fans love him. All the way from Virginia to Florida, Ranger Ross, Ranger Ross, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I can't tell you how many fans are calling in for you. Well, I do appreciate it. You know, over the years of uh, professional wrestling, uh, the, the fans, oh, what a, what a side kick that was right on the tip of his nose. That that Grundy. Grundy's got to be six foot five. Ricky, he caught him square in the jaw. That's right. We're going we're gonna to take a look at this on our slow motion instant replay. And when we do, I want you to describe it. But that big foot from Ranger Ross found the target square on the side of the jaw. And Grundy still doesn't know what happened. Here he comes. He's going to spin right around, come about six foot five in the air. Boom, right there on the side of the face. And that's all she wrote. Shows the flexibility of Ranger Ross. Stick around. We've got lots more coming up on South Atlantic Wrestling, including a visit to the stable, the stud stable, with the South Atlantic heavyweight champion, Robert Fuller. Don't go away. And thank goodness our favorite part of the program, the stud stable section, has come on. Well, today it's not going to be the same type of stud stable section. You're not going to see me out here with my guitar, and I know that's not a very good thing for you. You're not going to see all the boys out here with me because I got something to talk to you about today of the uttermost importance. I want you to listen up very carefully. There's a reason that I bought this, this uh, segment of the program, the stud stable segment, is because a lot of things goes on in this company none of you people know about. Today, I'm going to enlighten you on a situation that took place that a lot of you are going to be very surprised. You have some heroes in here right now. I'm talking about guys like Paul Jones, Ricky Steamboat, Vince Torelli, that you just think are wonderful. But let me enlighten you on what kind of men these, these, these guys really are. And you wouldn't hear this had I not bought this segment of the television, that the stud stable sticks together, that every time you see one of us, you see all of us together. The reason why is because you see backstabbers, you see thieves in this company, you see people that would steal my belt rather than win it, you see people that'll back jump you and hit you with anything they can to try to hospitalize you. I got an incident I want to talk to you about, and rather than sit here and talk and talk and talk, picture's better than a thousand words. I want Matt Bourne to come out here right now. Look to bring him out, would you? Matt, come out and join me. Should I have a look at a man right here that the other night in Spartanburg, myself and the Nasty Boys left the matches early. We left not knowing the devious people that, that are involved in this company. Matt, coming out of the dressing room, tell him what happened. Well, I want you to take a good look. Look at his face. Get a close up here on this man's face. Take a look at the stitches. I'm not out here, Robert. I'm not out here to try to get any sympathy. What I am, what I do want, is I want you people to know the truth. You people have these idols. You put these people up on pedestals like Ricky Steamboat, like Paul Jones and Vince Torelli. Now, Robert kind of told you briefly something that happened in Spartanburg, and I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Robert left early. We usually leave together, but this particular night he left early. I'll never leave you again. I took a shower, packed my bag, walked out of the dressing room, and I caught a brief glimpse of Paul Jones. I looked to my right, and I saw Ricky Steamboat and Vince Torelli, and before I could even put my bag down, I had two bags in my hands. I caught a crowbar across my head, split my head open. Listen to this, Luther. Yeah. Now, these are people that you put up on a pedestal. These are people that you idolize. Now, I would fight any one of these men. I'm telling you right now that you are lying. I would fight any one of these Cut men. Your mouth. This is not your section. I'm one at a time, in stable. the ring, and or in a parking lot. Listen to this, listen to this, you Somebody get him out of here. But I, I took a crowbar across the forehead. You're telling a lie. 
knocked me down, laid me open. All I felt was a warm rush of blood coming down my face. I looked up, and I felt the chair across my back, and I felt boots kicking me all over the place. I woke up. I woke up, and I looked at my watch, and it was 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was laying there. I crawled. I crawled and pulled myself up on my car. I crawled in my car, and I pulled. I drove away, and I found to myself. I looked at the rear view mirror, and I looked at myself, and I'm going to take care of it, and I'll take care of you later. Let me finish it. Luther, take him to the side. Come on back over here, Luther. Come on back over here. We're going to finish this up in just a second. Luther, this is, something's going to be done about this. These guys are going to pay for what they did. Yeah. Ricky Steamboat's not going to be screaming from the background. You're going to be looking me in the face, boy. Paul Jones, you're going to pay for this. Vince Torelli, you had the opportunity of a lifetime to sign a contract for the greatest organization of all time, the Stud Stable. You didn't sign it. I'm going to tell you, boy, you're going to pay for it. Here's your opportunity to prove what kind of man you are, what the stable means to you. You, I want you to take Torelli out. How you feel about it, Luther? I take him. I take him. You take me a him chance. out. I take him out. Torelli, that's a challenge. We want you right now. We want you today. We're gonna start with you, Torelli. We're gonna put you in the hospital. You're gonna think Matt Bourne is looking like an angel when Luther gets done with you. Luther, do it and do it right. I'm done with this section. This contest is scheduled for one fall. Making its way to the ring right now from Penbrook, here is War Eagle, Chris Chavis. And he's one of the fan favorites, Ricky. They love him here. War Eagle, Chris Chavis. is yeah. dance wall with a mass cruel connection. Hey, I hate to inter inter interrupt this introduction with, with my friend, uh, Chris Chavis, War Eagle. The Robert Fuller just walked by after he just got done with the stud stable segment up there, and everybody listened and heard what Matt Bourne had to say about the three of us. Paul Jones, Vince Torelli, myself, jumping him after the match with Spartanburg. I couldn't sit here and tolerate that, and I called him a liar. We'll settle our differences. But right now, let's get on the other like way. Well, the cruel connection in War Eagle, Chris Chavis, I must admit that I was a little stunned here, Ricky, at the allegations that you, Paul Jones, and Vince Torelli would ever, in, in, in your darkest moment, subscribe to such action. I, I'm stunned. I really am stunned that he would make that allegation. Knowing you like I have over the years, I can't buy it. Well, you know something, Ted, that particular evening in Spartanburg, I wrestled sports right after my match, there was an intermission, okay? There were several fans out back, and several fans that came out and spoke to me. I had my wife with me, I had my son with me, we signed some autographs, we took some pictures, and I left. Now, I would like to know how Maniac Matt Bourne comes up with this story. Himself, Paul Jones, and Vince Torelli laid him open with a two-by-four, and the three of us jumped against jumping. I, I have to say, Ricky, you don't have to explain to me. I know better than to even ask you if that if that had happened. But whoever got a hold of Matt Bourne did a thorough job, I might add. And speaking of a thorough job, if this cruel connection gets the uh, the Indian upset, he's going to know the meaning of a thorough job. A tremendous body slam. This guy can go. You know, I've been working out with Chris for the last couple of weeks at my gym, and without a doubt, that big man in the ring, that Indian, is pushing 11 heck out of me because I'm telling every morning that I get up after a workout with him. 277 pounds, and it's all muscle, my friend. You can see that he does spend time in the gym, and he is uh, he's on a mission. We spoke to him last week, and he says his mission right now is to win the South Atlantic. Here comes Paul Jones. Jones. I'm sure he heard in the back what was going on and what they were saying on the monitor. <laughs> Ricky, did you hear that? I, heard, I was right there. I, I got up in their face. Just let me tell you something. I think the fans know you well enough, Ricky and myself, and Vince Torelli, that we're not going to stab anybody in the back, and we'll face them face to face. We're not going to jump them with a two-by-four. Come on. Listen, we would love to see them in that situation if we did it ourselves, and we, like I said, we wouldn't use a two-by-four. Take that kind of credit in the ring. Gentlemen, I am not an attorney, but it sounds to me what was done to you during that segment of Stud Stable is actionable. I believe that you could get a libel action against them, because those are serious allegations, my friend. Look, Ted, it looks like you ran into a Mack truck. Uh, i tell you one thing. 
We'll get a, we'll get ours, and I guarantee you, if we can do it, and when we do it, Steamboat, we want the fans to see it. We'll do it in the ring. We'll do it in front of everybody where they can see. We don't have to wait for anybody at the end of the night behind a building with a two by four and, and take and take advantage of somebody three against one. That's not our style. The fans know that's not our track record. We don't work like that. We don't operate like that. We'll take care of business in the middle of the ring. And speaking of taking care of business, Chris Chavis, the War Eagle, giving the cool connection all he wants with those big around tomahawk chops. Yo, Ted, oh. Ted, I want to make another statement, Fuller. I'll be glad to put Vince Torelli in a ring against Luther D. Well, I'll, I'll have Vince Torelli ready next week. Next he'll week? Be, he'll, next week, he'll be right here. He'll be in a ring. You bring that Luther D. You, you know, Paul, I'll tell you what, I would love to see something like that arranged sooner. I would love to see something like that arranged sooner. I think that the fans... Well, uh, Paul, is, you think Vince Torelli's ready, ready this hour? I'll tell you one thing. All right, all right. I'll have Vince Torelli in this hour. All right. All right. Challenge is answered. We'll have that on the, the program today of South Atlantic Wrestling. We have just been assured by Paul Jones that Vince Torelli will accept the challenge of Luther D today on this program. I can't wait. You know, we're going to have to just move out one of these matches, uh, Ted. We're, you know, we'll have, have to move out a match and substitute oh! with Luther D and, uh, and Vince Torelli. Great power slam. Let me show some of the strength of that Indian. I'll tell you Unbelievable what. Unbelievable how strong War Eagle is. going into that war dance, and we usually know that that means curtains. And I'll tell you, the cruel connection right now looks like he has been cruelly Whoa, what a disconnected. Time. Caught him coming off the ropes, and now he's got him into that version of that reverse crucifix slam. Boom! Bar the door, Katie. This one's over. This one belongs to the Indian War Eagle. Good. Davis. Good. Ricky, I'll tell you what. I've seen him perform this all over and over again, and no one does it better. Why don't you do it on a slow motion instant replay? Well, you know something, Ted? You have to take a man that's got some strength behind him to be able to pick somebody up that's 230, 240 pounds, use a lot of pressure, come across, land, knock the wind out of him. And one thing here that Chris does remember, and that is to hook that leg, and cover that man, and hold him on tight, and get the one, two, three count. My friend, the Indian, the winner. Brace yourself, Burlington, North Carolina, because the fur will fly Saturday, October 6th at the Burlington Athletic Stadium. 6 o'clock, War Eagle Chris Chavis, Vince Torelli, the U.S. Mail, Curtis Thompson will be there, Maniac Matt Bourne, Burlington's own Don and Wally Kernodal will be there. They're featured on this six-match card, highlighted by two big main events. South Atlantic Tag Champions, the Nasty Boys, put their titles on the line against the number one contenders, the American Bulldogs, and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat will meet the Tennessee stud, Robert Fuller, and it promises to be an exciting night. Bulldogs, you've had uh, the opportunity in the past. You're going to get another shot. Are you pumped up for this? That's right, Ted. We can't wait. We've been wrestling them a long time, and we got to win them, and this is it. We're going to beat you. We're tag team specialists. Quickness, speed, and strength. We're ready. Got to tell you something. That's a tough Tough package you're going to be taking. That's right, Ted, big I could feel it in my bones. You know, I've been having sleepless nights, and now it's time to start sleeping because I can feel it in my bones. I think we're going to do it this time because now it's time for all this hard work to pay off. Now let the big dogs eat. Don't forget, they're going to be taking on the nasties, and a guy who's got his hands full, good friend of mine, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, the Tennessee stud on the menu again. You know something, Ted? How can you believe that one evening on television... I was sitting right next to you, commentating with you, doing the color on the show. And there's Maniac Matt Bourne, Robert Fuller on the stud stable, coming up to almost like tears in his eyes, trying to win the sympathy over the people, telling everyone that me and Paul Jones and Vince Torelli jumped him in Spartanburg, South Carolina. After the matches were over, he walked out by himself. Poor Maniac Matt Bourne. One of them said he got hit in the head with a crowbar. The other one said it was a chair. One of them said it was 46 stitches. The other one said it was 32. On and on and on again. And I'm sure when the people will see as this thing evolves, as each week goes on, that these two guys are going to have a hard time getting their act together. Well, I'll tell you something, Robert Fuller. When you come to Burlington, North Carolina, on October the 6th, you better have your act together 100%. You better not be confused in that ring. Because every time that the Dragon has been in the ring with a championship match, and I don't pull all stops and I just let it all hang out and I start breathing that fire up and down your back. 
I'll come back with a one, two, three. I'll come back with the gold around my waist and come back for these people here in the Carolina. Come by Dairy Department's Police Department. Are you tired of the same old fundraiser? Are you tired of cake sales, bake sales, yard sales? Well, now you can put the power of this television station and professional wrestling to work for you. That's right. America's number one fundraiser, professional wrestling, can come to your hometown, sponsored by your group or organization. And don't worry, if you don't have the ability, you don't think you can promote it, we'll send someone in to help you. To find out more details, call 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, 704-362-2994. Don't miss it. Be there. This next contest is scheduled for one fall, weighing 220 pounds from Gilbert, South Carolina. Here is David Studemeyer. Yeah! His opponent, weighing 247 pounds from Charlotte, here is the U.S. male, Curtis Thompson. I can tell you right now that here's a kid that uh, has the world of promise. And, uh, you know, there has been a tremendous change, Ricky, from the time that uh, he left the Carolinas and had gone out into Canada and Portland. Those that have known him for a long time say, we don't know what happened out there on that Pacific Northwest. Curtis Thompson is not the same Curtis Thompson. He has come back meaner. He has come back uh, ornery, cocky, in fact, in love with himself. You know, Ted, everybody that did, did know Curtis Thompson four or five years ago, and like you said earlier, he went out and, and ventured around the world, around the North American continent, up to Canada and around, then came back a better wrestler. He is cocky. He does have a lot of confidence. More aggressive, and you saw an example of that when he caught Studemeyer twice Whoa. there, catching Studemeyer coming off the ropes and going for a choke. Now, you see something right there. I don't believe in that. If you want to pin the man, if you beat the man, if you think that you've got him beaten down, don't go for a cover one, two, and then lift him up by the lift his head up by the hair. There's no need for that. Ronnie Hanna cautioning uh, the U.S. male, as he is called. Studemeyer caught coming off that rope, count of two, and there yeah. he is, Curtis lifting the head up again. Shouldn't shouldn't have to do that. And I've talked don't to him. Don't add insult to injury. I have asked him. You're beaten. Ricky, I've asked him. I've talked to him, and I've asked him why he resorts to the tactics, and he avoids it. He never addresses the question. Never addresses the question. Studemeyer's a veteran, been around for a while, and a good test. Whoa, right what a kick. Right on the chin. You man. know something, Ted? You know, you would think that a guy on television would like to get out there and beat the man as quickly as possible. To get up there in his interviews and say, look, I've been beating my wrestlers, beating these guys in one minute and 30 seconds or 45 seconds, whatever. But then again, in the back of his mind, you know, in the back, oh, what a close. Oh. Great standing clothesline. Mm. Caught Studemeyer, who walked right into that one. Right then and there, it, it, from watching Curtis Thompson the last several weeks, it tells you one thing. He likes to get out there and just punish these guys. Well, he's got him up for a, for a pile driver. Oh, right on the head. Hammered him like a two-penny nail. One finger, one, two, and three. And Curtis Thompson has just laid a devastating pile driver. Devastating pile driver on David Studemeyer. Ricky, let's take a look at this on the slow motion instant replay. You you describe the action as you see it there and watch that head just pierce the canvas. Well, you know, most of the times when you put a guy up there in, in a pile driver, you will sit back on it. But right here, he jumps straight down to his knees. Wow. Studemeyer's head goes straight down to the canvas. You got Curtis Thompson's body weight. You got Studemeyer's body weight. A one finger count. One, two, three. Well, the match not, is over. Not only devastating, but humiliating as well. Don't go yeah. away because we're going to nasticize you. The Nasty Boys in tag team action on South Atlantic Wrestling. Coming up next. I've had to push it, boom it, go back and forth. Wrestling T-shirt, an autographed picture of your favorite South Atlantic wrestler. And with your membership card, you get $1 off any South Atlantic Pro Wrestling event. Send $10 plus $2 shipping and handling to South Atlantic Pro Wrestling Fan Club. PO Box 221269, Charlotte, North Carolina. Include your shirt size and your favorite wrestler. Join today. This next contest is scheduled for one fall. Now making their way to the ring, weighing 660 pounds. Here are Sags and Nobs. They are the Nasty Boys. Their opponents, first of all, weighing 240 pounds from Charlotte, David Isley. His partner weighing 240 pounds from Cherokee.
Rocky Hills, North Carolina, Jay Eagle. Well, David Isley and Jay Eagle certainly have their hands full with us. Prayer from New York City, Ricky. They are rough. They're tough customers, nasty, vicious, and, uh, of course, members of the studs table, so you know the theory that they subscribe to. You know, without a doubt, Ted, they are the number one tag team within this organization. you got the Bulldogs that are hot on their tails after those championship tag team belts. David Isley and, and uh, I'm sorry, the other the young... Jay Eagle. Jay Eagle. They've got their hands full with these two big characters from New York. And so does referee Byron Richard, who's already trying to clear the ring so that only two men are in the ring at one time. Shut up! right away they'll they'll circle the ring taunt the audience and there they go collar and elbow we're underway into the corner break it up says byron richard and of course the knobber completely oblivious to the instructions from the referee powders away at david isley isley with a fine maneuver great drag takedown another hard drag takedown and the nasty boys right now know that they've got their hands full with David Eisner. I like David Eisner. I, what he's I, I like David, too. He trains at my place. He works out very hard. He's been wrestling now for about three or four years. I think, I think that the nasty boys at times try to rush things a little bit and, and uh, underestimate some of the caliber of wrestling that will come into this organization and find out that these guys know how to wrestle. No David doubt. Isley does know how to wrestle. No doubt about it. And uh, when it gets hot and heavy and he needs to resort to it, he can go downtown as well. We've seen him in a couple of Pier 6 brawls. Tag oh, the made. big man does a leapfrog. Boom! Isley's there, though. Get that arm. Tag your partner in. That's what tag team is all about. They must have heard you. Into the ring comes Jay Eagle coming down on the arm. Sam in the ring right now and working on that arm you know something Jay Ted, you can see there's a big height and weight difference here no doubt no gotta doubt. give a lot of credit to Jay Eagle getting in there gonna try and give it 100 percent effort well I'll tell you what uh, when you're giving up the amount of weight that you're giving up and supposedly strength you better be quick and I know that Isley and Eagle can uh, can go the distance they're pretty quick but it's going to take, I think, a little bit more than that. They're going to have to be a little more aggressive if they hope to uh, to get a victory today on national TV over the Nasty Boys. Tag is made. Knobs back into the ring, pounding away on that shoulder of Jay Eagle. You know what surprises me about Knobs is that how quick a man weighing 300-plus pounds can move. No doubt. And this guy is in tremendous shape. Oh, good condition. Did you see that reflex? Oh. I mean, that's called being on your feet there. Got rammed into the turnbuckle, and immediately the reaction was to kick that big foot up, and he did, and he caught Jay Eagle coming in. Tremendous boot to the midsection. Jay Eagle is hurt, Ricky. He's trying to clear those cobwebs right now. I believe he is hurt. If he does get his head clear, the first thing that he should do is tag out. Get into that other corner and say, Isley, help me out. Back into the turnbuckle, and that one caught him on the side oh. of the head. 300-plus pounds coming on the back uh, in the form of uh, knobs who had made the tag and that head rammed right into the middle of the canvas. Yeah, these guys will have you tasting so much canvas you'll think it's your, you're an artist. We've seen this one before. Power slam followed from the cannonball from the top rope. The tag has been made and the legal man in the ring right now is saying. I think we're going to see the end of the match coming up here. So I tell you what. Boom. Elbow on the chest, 300 and some odd pounds. Byron Richard flags it. Three. It is all over. And this one belongs to the Nasty Boys. The Nasty Boys. Victorious over the team of David Isley and Jay Eagle. Ricky, let's look at that on our slow motion instant replay. Describe the action as you see it. I think the Nasty Boys have shown everybody on television time and time again why they are the number one tag team in this area. You've got 300 plus pounds coming off the top rope, and what it does, it knocks the wind out of you and hurts your ribs real bad. The Nasty Boys, new tag team champions in this area, and probably going to be around for a while. The 
Burlington Athletic Stadium is the place to be Saturday night, October 6th, because War Eagle, Chris Chavis, Vince Torelli, the U.S. Mail, Curtis Thompson, Maniac, Matt Bourne, and Burlington's own Don and Wally Kernodal will be there. They're featured on this six-match card highlighted by two big main events, starting with the tag championship on the line. The champs, the nasty boys, put their titles on the line against the challenge of the number one contenders, the American Bulldogs, and then Ricky the Dragon Steamboat will take on the Tennessee stud, Robert Fuller, Vince Torelli, a tough package to try to handle for anybody. Hey, Vince Torelli, he can't touch me. It's just like my song says, you can't touch us, Vince Torelli. Hey, I'm going to beat you one, two, three, right in the middle of the squared circle, and I'm going to have all those ladies coming after me. You know, you look at your body, you look at my body. Well, let's take a look, another look at it. Let's not look at your body. I want all women to look at me because I am the U.S. male, and I cover everything from head to toe. I'm 247 pounds of twisted steel, and ladies, I ain't nothing but sex appeal, and a picture is worth a thousand words. Curtis Thompson in love definitely with himself. The stud, the Tennessee stud, are Robert Fuller and Matt Bourne. This promises to be an exciting night. You and the Dragon going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's right. We're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Matt's going to be right there in my corner as an advisor, manager, whatever you want to call it. Let me tell you a few things right now I don't like. I don't like a liar, and I don't like a thief. Let me tell you something, boy. All the things you said you're going to have, you're not going to have any of them. You're not going to win. You're not going to get no gold. You're not going to make those people in Burlington happy people. When I get off an airplane in South Carolina and have to drive to Burlington, when I get there, I'm already sick. I'm mad. And when I get mad, Buster, that's when I get turned on. And you don't want me turned on, Steamboat, because you're not man enough, you Carolina fool, to stand hand-to-hand -hand with the man from Tennessee, the Tennessee stud. Matt Bourne right here was jumped by you. I don't care what you said. He was jumped by you and your cronies. I'm talking about Paul Jones. You're going to pay for every one of them. Torelli, Jones, they might as well all be there, Steamboat. I'm going to take you out high and mighty Tennessee style, punk. This contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, accompanied by his advisor, Paul Jones, here is Vince Torelli. Opponent weighing 270 pounds from Columbia, South Carolina. Here is Luther D. Well, this is the match that uh, the stud uh, Robert Fuller, the South Atlantic heavyweight champion, had wanted. He said Luther D was going to go after Vince Torelli. Uh, we talked to Paul Jones and said, Paul, can we arrange that for the program? And uh, they switched around a couple of matches, scrapped a couple of matches, and we've got it for you right now. Vince Torelli. Vince Torelli, accompanied by his confidant, his friend, his manager, Paul Jones, in the ring against Luther D. And I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but the Tennessee stud and Paul Jones had quite a stare-off as, uh, as Torelli uh, entered uh, the ring area. You know, right now you can see the big difference in size, but uh, Vince Torelli's track record, his background, speaks for itself. I think uh, Vince is going to have his hands full, but, you know, Luther's also going to have his hands full. Well, I'll tell you what, Luther doesn't know what he just did. He just slapped Torelli. Let me tell you that Torelli's not just an outstanding wrestler, Ricky, but we know his background, a great all-around athlete, and a finalist in both the California and the National Badman competition. This guy, this guy can go downtown. Now he resorts to wrestling because that's what he's in. He says that's what the marquee says is wrestling. But if you get him upset, that's like sticking your hand in a hornet's nest. That's right. And saying, here, kitty, kitty. You're going to see some outstanding wrestling moves during the uh, moves during the course of this match. Torelli wearing the aqua pants, uh, tights, what am I saying, pants, uh, in there against uh, Luther D in the purple. The referee for this event is Ronnie Hanna. 
And this is this has got potential to get out of hand here because we've got Paul Jones at ringside. We've got the Tennessee stud at ringside. And both men drawing closer to each other. I don't know if you could see it there on the end of the camera. Right there at the edge of the screen, Paul Jones and the Tennessee stud exchanging words. Luther's going to feel that uh, he's a pretzel at some points in this matchup because Corelli will tie you up, twist you, he'll put you in, he'll make your body bend in ways you never knew it could. You know something, Ted, without a doubt, you see in Vince Torelli is, is certainly giving Luther one heck of a wrestling lesson. No doubt about it. By the now, way, if they start to mix it up and things get tough, that might be another story. Torelli, who is a strong say no to drug advocate, uh, visits quite a few of the high schools in the South Atlantic area gives speeches all the time to Rotary Clubs, really does his part to fight drugs, and so does the South Atlantic Wrestling Association. All you have to do if your group, civic group, is uh, looking to do a fundraiser, get in touch with us, will you? We'll flip those numbers and addresses on the screen from time to time during the program, and we want you to give us the opportunity to show you just how much we want to help you fight drugs. You know, from the sound of the bell, tell uh, uh, Ted, Vince uh, Torelli has been on top of this particular match, giving Luther one heck of a wrestling lesson here. What a drop oh, right on, right the, on the money, Vince Torelli. Vince Torelli caught man. Oh, I'll tell you, he caught him square on the jaw. And look at the, look at the legs on Torelli. You got to know that those drop kicks will take their toll over a period of time. Hours and hours of running and training in the gym. Vince Torelli hooking that leg. Does he have him? One, two, and almost. Man, that had to be two and a half, close to three there. And I, I might venture to say Ronnie Hanna may have even been a little slow with that third count. The stud now starting to yell at Luther D. I don't think he's too happy with, with what's transpired so far, Ricky. I, you're right. Vince Torelli's been in the driver's seat since the, oh, since the opening bell, and that, that certainly is not making the Tennessee stud Robert Fuller very happy. Not at all. Not at all. As a matter of fact, Luther hasn't shown me a thing yet. No, sir, and I didn't know what uh, the stud had uh, yelled at Luther D., but I can assure you that it wasn't very nice. This is not like coachly advice that he's giving Luther D there. You know, for the first time during this match, you see Luther's on top of things. He's got Vince Torelli's arm. Well, I can understand uh, the Tennessee stud, Ricky. We know what kind of a contract offer he had made Vince Torelli. Vince talked to you and told you about the numbers on that contract. All right. He signed Luther D to a very lucrative contract, and I don't think he's getting his money's worth out of Luther D. And uh, he's very upset about it. Boom, elbow to the chest. Luther D falls. Hey, in this day and age, you make a bad investment. It happens to everyone. Well, I'll tell you right now, Luther D looks almost listless out there in the middle of the ring. And I tell you, if this, the further this match goes along, the more you got to like Torelli because he is certainly a superb condition athlete. Another drop kick. One thing you got to say about Luther D, he's got a lot of staying power. No doubt. He keeps getting back up. No doubt. There they go, Torelli. Torelli uh, and, and, and the Tennessee stud Robert Fuller exchanging words. And I tell you, that's something Paul Jones doesn't want to see. Great suplex. One, two, and uh-oh. Got that shoulder up at the count of two and a half again. I'll tell you, one thing that Paul Jones doesn't want to see is Torelli being distracted by the Tennessee stud at the side of the ring. That's right. He instructs Vinny, you take care of what's happening in the ring. I'll guard the perimeter. Great hip lock takedown. You know, earlier in the earlier in the show, when Luther came walking out with with the Tennessee stud, I was hoping. Oh, what a beautiful oh, belly, belly to belly suplex! That does it. That was the end of that. That does it. Luther didn't show me a thing. How about you, Ken? Not a thing at all, Ricky. I got to tell you, I got to tell you that uh, the Tennessee stud is walking away in disgust. He is disgusted because he had promised. Let's look at that on instant replay. You describe it. Belly to belly. This is Vince Torelli's specialty. Way over high. Hip toss, waist lock, got the man down. It just jars your back, your head. One, two, three. One thing about Vince Torelli, you'll always find him hooking that leg. Well, I tell you, we have more coming up. Don't go away. This is South Atlantic Wrestling.
their opponents. First of all, weighing 260 pounds from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, here is Buddy Kirk. Brady Colson, in the afternoon. His partner, weighing 228 pounds from Pittsburgh, Trent Knight. Well, there you have it, Trent Knight and uh, his buddy Bubba Kirk taking on uh, the American Bulldogs. And I got to tell you something, Ricky, right after that last match, I saw the Tennessee stud tear up what appeared to be the contract that he had signed with Luther D and throw it into the ring in about 100 pieces. So we're going to follow that closely. But, you know, I was wondering what was going on over there. I was watching the slow-mo and calling the action. And somebody told me... Just what you had told him. Yep, Robert Fuller uh, was tearing up the contract. Yep. The day. I don't know if legally he could do that, so we'll be following that in the ring right now. Trent Knight. And uh, this is Rex of the American Bulldogs. Referee for the cement is uh, Byron Richard. The Bulldogs on a collision course with the Nasty Boys. They want that title, Riggy. I've spoken to Spike and Rex, and they said that they're on a mission. That's their goal. They're going to get it. They want it. You know, it's just a matter of time before the Bulldogs learn the nasty boys get their style down get their way of habits down you know the odds are against you just keep wrestling somebody and eventually you're going to you're going to come up with a win and they will come away with the with the tag championship well trent knight from pittsburgh the steel city 218 pounds and this guy's a good wrestler as well trent's been around for a few years now he's trying to make a mark for himself every time you see him in the ring he goes up against one of the main event people he's trying as hard as giving his 110 percent you can only get better from testing the best in the business that's Michael. right one of the things he's going to learn is that this is certainly Whoa. no match in what a show of strength, strength. No match whatsoever. Did you see him lift him up high over his head like a sack of potatoes? What a show of strength. These bulldogs are fluid, too. You're going to see them tag in and out. There's the tag right now. No sooner we say it, they do it. You know, they've done a lot of touring together. They wrestled in Japan, Australia, New Zealand, New Zealand, all around the world. And in every port, they picked up a little something that has helped them their arsenal. Well, it, it, it makes you a much better wrestler. You get to see other combinations and, uh, and what other tag teams are doing in other parts of the world. Stuff that, that uh, you may not think about or even see. Believe you me, you know, traveling around the, around the country and around the world, it, it, it has its pluses and has its minuses. Makes you tougher. Apply that pressure on that arm. Trent Knight. Notice the difference between two guys that, that uh, wrestle together an awful lot and then two guys that are wrestling maybe you know, a couple of times a year together right. as, uh, as these two guys are. And you will see the difference in, in the, the fluidity, the, uh, the, the, the way that they, that they conduct themselves in the ring. It's almost a second nature. You know where your partner's at at all times. You know, that has to be to, to be a successful tag team. You had Trent Knight and the start of that match that was in, that, in the match up until just recently. Meanwhile, the, t the Bulldogs have been tagging in and out. No doubt. Bubba Kirk in the ring right now against Spike into the ropes and Byron Richard calling for the break. Boom! Right shoulder to the chest, going to come back and this time, this time Trent Knight plants a, a knee to the back of Spike. Bulldog Spike hurt by that knee. Bubba Kirk right now. I'll tell you, there, there's another feather in the cap of Bubba Kirk and Trent Knight if they can upset the Bulldogs oh. on national TV. Without a doubt, it'll, and, it'll knock the rankings down oh, a few steps for the Bulldogs. And right now, they are ranked number one in the South Atlantic Wrestling rankings. One, two, and he kicks out. We have just been informed that uh, next week, Curtis Thompson and Vince Torelli are going to meet in the main event. I oh. can't wait to see that one. I cannot wait to see that one. That's going to be a very exciting match without a doubt. Curtis Thompson has proved himself on television here every week that he's been here. Up against Vince Torelli, who's also proved. It's going to be very interesting, the outcome of that match. Well, we've got a, got a little, little double teaming right now. And uh, Spike and Rex right now have their hands full. Perhaps a little more of a challenge than I had expected from Trent Knight and Bubba Kirk. You know, some... Sometimes when you are uh, when, when you're ranked high and you got your eyes set on uh, like the nasty boys, you tend sometimes to take the other opponents in your path a little lightly, and uh, they may have done that with Trent Knight and Bubba Kirk. You know, it, it does happen. Another thing, you might have had a match two or three nights earlier. You might have got a hip pointer. You might have stretched your back. You might have done something, and it slows you down a little bit. A number of injuries come up in the course of the matches that you have throughout the month. 
Well, he planted that boot square to the jaw of Trent Knight. Knight making the tag, and Bubba Kirk re-entering the ring right now. There's the tag, and Rex, Bulldog Rex, into the ring, firing away Bubba Kirk. He's going to clear it out right that now. That was a well-needed tag also. Oh, he had to. He, he got stunned, and now, mm. now we know what's coming up now, my friend. There's that tremendous slam. There's that tremendous slam. And it's usually followed by that goal line stand. Here it goes. Boom. Looked like a double thrust, a double clothesline of some sort. Hook in the leg. That's it. This one belongs to the Bulldogs, Ricky. Let's you look know, at that. That's a tag team combination right there. Just showing the wrestling fans that these boys have been around. A lot of confidence is built up with the win on television such as this. You got one of the Bulldogs running over, slingshotting the other one into the chest, into the neck area. A double thrust, a double clothesline. There's the cover, hooking the leg, a very smart move. The Bulldog once again keeping the number one ranking and the winner of the match. It's an honor to have the mayor of the Queen City of Charlotte, the Honorable Sue Myrick, with us of South Atlantic Wrestling. And, Mayor, we know that you are staunchly anti-drug, and that's why we asked you on the program today, because South Atlantic Wrestling is going to be doing something with you on September 30th at the Grady Cole Center. We're going to be hooking up and fighting drugs, something that is destroying the American cities now. Wonderful. There, there cannot be enough people behind this effort. We've gotten to a point where it really is serious, and, and we're past the point of just glossing it over like we've been doing. So we really need to get the whole community involved, the whole city, the whole country. Everybody's got to get behind it, or we're not going to fight it. And, of course, this is going to benefit uh, Project Graduation. Tell us a little something about that. Project Graduation is wonderful. It, it is a, a, an effort by the parents to give a drug-free, alcohol-free celebration at graduation time for all the high school children in this area. It's been very, very successful. It's always held out at Carowinds. It goes on all night. Wonderful time, and the kids enjoy it very much. And it shows that there is an alternative, which is what it's all about. Parents for a drug-free youth, the city of Charlotte, South Atlantic Wrestling. How can people get involved right now, folks that are watching? They can call to Parents for a Drug-Free Youth and volunteer their time and their energies to work on Project Graduation. It's all volunteer. Parents and others who are interested get behind it and really put the effort into it. And it's just another example of how if we all come together, we can make some progress. Mayor Sue Myrick, I want to thank you for joining us on South Atlantic Wrestling today. You're welcome. Glad to be here. All right. When we meet again next week, i got to tell you, Vince Torelli and Curtis Thompson are going to be going at it. And, Ricky, that's, that promises to be a tremendous main event. You know, everyone that uh, has seen these two guys wrestle in every week and they're coming through with an unblemished record but there's got to be a winner and we're going to see it here next week see you next week